What's up you data friends, it's Yanis here and welcome to my channel. In this video I'm going to show you how you can build this Streamlit app from scratch where you can deploy your machine learning models. So we have already trained and stored a machine learning model, then the user is actually inputting the values over here, so let's say credit score of 450, age 22, and then number of products maybe zero and then we can click predict and this is actually sending the inputs into our already trained and stored machine learning model and it's returning us the prediction and the prediction is saying that there is a 51 probability of this customer of being a churn and the output is churn we also have this table over here sorry, the graph that has the feature importances. So the most important features that affect our prediction. And if I go back over here, in the previous video, we have actually went through the development phase of our machine learning model. I'm gonna have the link in the video description in case you want to watch that first. And in this video, we are going to go through the deployment of building this Streamlit app from scratch. And before we start this video, let me just say that if you're passionate about data analytics and data science, then please consider liking this video, subscribing to my channel and enable notifications for my future videos. Right, starting with the libraries we are going to use, we're going to need sklearn.preprocessing because we have also saved and export a min max scaler that we are going to apply on the inputs before we send the data to the model so we are going to scale all this data over here then you're going to need streamlit pigol because this is where the models are stored pandas and then plotly in order to create this bar graph over here which we can actually zoom in is actually very good. Right, first we set the Streamly layout to be white because we want to use all the page. Then we load our pre-trained model and our min max scaler. So these two files, we have actually created them and export them in the previous video. These are the files over here. So this is the export. And now we are importing the model and the scaler. The next thing we do is that we define all the features that the model needs. And these features have to be exactly the same as the features we have used to train the model and they have to be on exactly the same order and the same data type. So if you check the data frame that we use to train the model, it looks like this. So our features have to be all the column names of this data frame which is basically the ones we have over here. Next, we need to specify which columns require scaling because as I said, we have used a min max scaler in order to scale our data. So these columns are the ones we need to scale. Then we set some default values. So each time you refresh the page, you are going to get those default values that you see over here. Next, we are adding an image on the sidebar. So this image is basically this image you see over here and also the title, uh, which is user inputs. Next, we need to collect all the user inputs, which is basically creating all the input boxes you see over here on the left hand side. So what this is saying for I index in feature, which is basically these features over here, the feature names, then if the feature is in scale variables, which is these uh, six variables over here, I want to create this sidebar with a number input, which is basically these bars you see over here with the plus and minus. Uh, if I go back, else if it's not, so if it's a Boolean, we have Boolean over here, then I want to create a checkbox, which is basically these checkbox you see over here that you click on them like this. Uh, and otherwise, if it's just a number, I don't know if I have this, I don't really need it because all of my numeric variables are actually in the scale variables over here, but we have it just in case. Uh, next, we need to convert all these inputs, so the user inputs, into a data frame. 
So if we visualize it quickly, so if I copy this and then paste it uh, above here, so you can see what it does, click run, you can see these are all the inputs. So this is what this code uh, generated over here. And then when we convert this into a data frame, it's going to look like this in a data frame. Uh, coming down uh, here again, the next thing we do is that we apply min max scalar to the required columns. So first we create a copy of the data frame and then we apply our scalar into the scale variables, which is these variables you see over here. Next, I am adding another image and this time the image is the main image you see over here and also our title, which is customer churn prediction. So if I go back, this is our title. Next, we are splitting the layout into two columns. So in Streamlit, when you want to separate the page into different sections, then you have to use columns. So in this case, we are separating this into the left column and also the right column that we have our prediction. So in the left column, we want to add the title and then this plot from Plotly. So if we come down here, we are saying with left, we are adding the header. We are loading our feature importance Excel file, which is this one over here. And then we are plotting the feature importances as you see over here. Another thing I have added in the Visual Studio Code, I think I have added the height and the width so we can actually edit the size of the plot. So I'm going to quickly add it here so we have it. Uh, next, on the right page, we want to add a header prediction. We want to add a button called predict, which is, uh, where is it? This button over here. Then we want to calculate the probabilities of the customer being a churn. So this is the probability prediction, predict probability from our model. We want to predict whether it's a churn or not. So this is going to give us a zero or one. And in our case, if it's a churn, I want to say churn. Otherwise, I want to say retain. So this is what you see over here, retain. But if it's a churn, it's going to say churn. Uh, and then if I come back, I also want to display the values and I'm basically displaying the predicted value, the predicted probability for the churn, the predicted probability for the retain. And then I'm also adding this st.markdown, the output, which is basically the prediction label, which is this label over here, which is churn or retain. Right, in order to run this now, you're gonna need to use Visual Studio Code. So you're gonna need to create a new file, and this file is going to be a Python file. You're gonna need to copy and paste this code into the Python file. So I'm just gonna copy it paste it over here. I'm going to rename it as uh, churn prediction uh, 2 and then I'm going to click rename. I need to save this. Remember to save it. Now I'm going to copy and paste this file in my file location that I have everything else so I can just open it. So in my case it's going to be over here. Churn, okay, I have added 2h but it's okay. I'm just going to copy this now. And then I'm going to paste it in the location I want it. So in my case, it's going to be over here. Click paste, churn prediction 2. And now I need to open Visual Studio Code. I actually have it open already. And you're going to need to do file, open folder, and then open the folder that you have the file in. So I've actually pasted it in the wrong folder, I think. So 41, which is 41 which is this one over here. So churn prediction two, and if I check, churn prediction two, there we go. Uh, now, in order to open this in the browser, we're gonna need to run streamlit run, and then the name of the file .py. In our case, I'm going to get the name of the file. So copy this, and then paste it over here, sorry, over here. Now I need to open a new command prompt so over here new command prompt and then over here i'm going to run it and this is going to open a new window on your browser which is going to be the stream leader there we go uh, let's try and test it now actually i want to change the orientation of this so i'm going to come back uh, where is it uh, over here i want to say true 
and then I want to do file, uh, save, come back, rerun. There we go, much nicer. Now let's try and edit the number of products, which is our most important feature. As you can see, this customer with this selection is actually retained, but if I change the number of products into zero and then click predict again, you can see it's a churn. Let's try one product. Uh, it's still a chain. The reason is because the number of products is the most important variable. That's why you see massive change when you adjust the number of products. If you adjust everything else, I don't know if you're going to get massive change. So let's do age 70, number of products 2, click uh, predict. Uh, this is a retain, yeah, high probability of retain. Let's do uh, age 20, click enter, predict. There we go again very low probability of churning however if we suddenly decrease the number of products click predict there you go you have a big probability of churning and this is why this is a churn right so this is it for this video uh, i hope you have enjoyed this video and you've gained enough value out of this video if you feel like you did i would really appreciate it if you click the like button subscribe to my channel and enable notifications for my future videos. In the next video, we are going to create this Power BI dashboard from scratch that has all of our predictions from our existing customers and also the probability. So the business can come into here, into the raw data, can click on the people who have not exited yet. However, they have a high probability of exiting of more than, let's say, 61% and all these people are basically a good target market for the bank, let's say, to contact them and try to stop them from churning. Uh, right, so thank you very much for watching this video and I'm going to see you in the next video.